the game. Hi, I'm Kelsa Dickey, the CEO of the Financial Coach Academy and my financial coaching business, Fiscal Fitness Phoenix. My coaching journey began more than a decade ago with me helping people for free from my dining room table. What was once a little business of mine has grown into a seven-figure company that employs a team of people. My goal is simple, to help you fall more and more in love with financial coaching. I believe financial coaching is the most rewarding way to make a living. If you are an aspiring financial coach or have been coaching for years, I'm here to help you create a business you love that gets your clients massive results. Let's get to it. Hey, financial coach. It is me, Kelsa Dickey, your host. And I am so excited to bring you the very first episode of the Financial Coach Academy podcast. Today should absolutely be celebrated. This is a new beginning, and I am so excited to bring this to you. We're going to kick things off with the very first episode, talking about what is a financial coach. I figured that was probably a pretty good place to start, right? So what is coaching? I think we should start there. Coaching is essentially helping a person to get more out of an area of their life than what they are able to do on their own. That's what coaching is. That means financial coaching is helping a person get more out of their money, get more out of themselves financially than what they could do without you. Pretty exciting, right? I know it when I think back to like when I first started financial coaching. So this was back in 2008 when I first launched my business. And what I thought financial coaching was is really not what financial coaching is. And I'm not sure if you can relate to this, but when I first started, I remember thinking that I would help people with budgeting and getting out of debt. And I sort of imagined the process would look like this. I would sit down with somebody, oftentimes at my dining room table, since that's where I started, and I would tell them something really intelligent about money, and I would teach them something. And then they would have this realization of just how smart and brilliant I am, and they would go and take action on that thing. In other words, I sort of thought that like once somebody knows better, they do better. And I quickly realized that Most times in all areas of our life, and including money, change is oftentimes not that easy. So we're going to talk about the types of people financial coaches help, the types of things we do during meetings, the types of things we definitely shouldn't be doing. We're going to essentially be helping you to bridge the gap between the financial part of financial coaching and the coaching part of financial coaching. I love financial coaching because it is a beautiful mix of both technical, financial, mathematical calculations and also behavior changes and habits and figuring out what makes a person tick and how they can feel excited and motivated and just overall pumped about the things they're doing with their money and the way they're living their life. It's both technical and creative. It requires both right and left brain, and I find that to be a really fun way to make a living. I always say that financial coaching is under the coaching umbrella of industries and professions. So if you've got the coaching umbrella and then underneath that you've got life coaching and then underneath life coaching is actually financial coaching. It is not under the umbrella of investments or financial advising like a lot of people think. I actually believe it's a form of coaching right? A lot of what we're do, what we do is helping people to take action with their money. It's not just the education piece. In a future episode, we're going to be diving into the differences between financial literacy and financial coaching. And then in another episode, I'm going to explore the differences between financial advising and financial coaching. So we're going to cover this in a lot more detail, but really financial coaching is under the umbrella of life coaching. The financial part of what we do is one small piece, and the coaching element is the majority of it. If you think about a business coach or a life coach, many of them probably will talk with their clients about money periodically. The difference is that as financial coaches, we always get back to talking about money and essentially using money as a tool to live a client's best life, whatever that is, right? So we don't shy away from money conversations. We actually lean into it. But that doesn't mean that we always talk about money. I'm going to be sharing so many different real-life examples of client conversations I've had over over the last decade or more. And one of the things you'll realize is that as financial coaches, we coach the whole person 
on their money. We don't just coach on money. So this is one of those shifts I would love to invite financial coaches in general to make, which is that money is just the currency that you are using to help people plan their life. But we also have to first start with really figuring out what do they want to do with their life, those bigger conversations, the goals, and that sort of thing. Those types of things are more important, and then we want to put your money behind those things. That's essentially what financial coaching is, okay? So we tend to create a plan along with the habits and the behaviors that help a person achieve a desired financial outcome. That is what financial coaching is. It's not just sort of teaching somebody a concept or telling them what to do. It's actually helping them to do something about the knowledge that you just shared with them. At the heart of it, we help people with their money, and it can get really complex or it can stay fairly simple. There's a lot of different niches you could choose as a financial coach. There's different parts of money that we can focus on. There's different types of clients you could serve. Your style of coaching may be very different than another financial coach, and that is all really cool. It's one of the reasons I love financial coaching. At the end of the day, we all help people do better things and feel better and feel more confident with one area of their life, and that's specifically around money. And then that translates into every other area of their life. Think of any goal a person has in life any goal at all, and it doesn't have to do anything with money on the surface. It could be something like losing weight or walking more or disconnecting from your phone earlier in the day, right? It could be traveling more. Think about any goal maybe you've had in your life, but think about any goal you've talked with friends or family members about as well. Chances are having a plan with your money would make achieving that goal happen faster, right? And that's really the epitome of financial coaching is like, let's take any goal you have in life and let's make sure your money is in alignment with making that happen for yourself. Let's actually create that life you want to live. And again, it's not just financial goals. Starting a family, if you have a plan in place with your money, if you feel confident and secure and stable and excited about the way you manage your money, starting a family is going to be a lot easier and feel like a lot less stress, right? We tell our clients when they want to start a family, and that's a big element of their goals in life, there's so many things to figure out. There's so many things to worry about and stress about and try to coordinate around starting a family that feels very scary and very unknown. We don't need the financial part of it to be added to that, right? Like we can actually put some plans in place so that you feel like the money part of it is easy so that you can focus your attention on all the other important elements of starting a family. Buying a house, launching a business, freeing up some of your time, right? Like oftentimes we can use money not just for things or possessions, but also to save us time and, you know, solve problems in our life and hire people to help us do things, right? Those are all really important elements. And if any of those goals um, are something that you've had, then chances are having a plan in place with your money is going to help. I think financial coaching is amazing because we get to work with driven, ambitious problem solvers, people who are looking to make their life better and to make things easier for themselves and want to show up for themselves differently than what maybe they have in the past. And so chances are what we get to experience as financial coaches is that we get to be a part of that journey. We get to witness it. We get to be their guide. We get to help them sort of achieve whatever it is that they want to achieve. It's just such a beautiful role that we get to play. I think about most days and weeks that I experience and I help people reach their goals and then celebrate those goals. I mean, who gets to say that, right? Like that's really what we get to do and we get to be right along that journey with them. So whereas financial literacy is knowledge of financial concepts, Financial coaching is the applied knowledge of those financial concepts. Financial coaches, we're going to focus on the behaviors and the mindset and actually doing something about what you know, right? It's really important to realize that while both things are important, financial literacy and financial coaching are both needed, along with financial advising and a number of other things, they're not the same thing, okay? We're going to dive into this in more detail, like I said, in a future episode. 
But financial literacy is knowing what to do. Financial coaching is knowing what to do and then feeling inspired and committed to do something about it. Financial coaching is helping a person to achieve more financially than they could achieve on their own. So I like to end every episode with a reflection question for you. I'm going to give you something to ponder, some things to simply consider. You can reflect on this question. You can talk it out with a friend or a family member, or maybe you prefer to journal out the answer to this question. Either way, the purpose is to deepen your awareness and to help you gain clarity on the episode topic that we're discussing. I would love to invite you to share your thoughts on the questions that I ask you. If you are watching this on YouTube, please just leave us a comment with your thoughts on the reflection question. If you're listening to our podcast, please take a screenshot of however you are listening to this and tag us on Instagram, Financial Coach Academy. Tag us and let us know what your thoughts are. The whole purpose of this podcast is to both educate, but also to coach you. We want to honor the coaching side of what we do. We want to get you thinking. We want to get you reflecting. We really want to make sure that we are helping you think differently about financial coaching. So here is your question for the end of this episode. I want you to think back on, a per, on your life particularly, an area where you've made changes or improvements, you've experienced growth, maybe it was in your career or possibly a weight loss journey, uh, maybe you got in shape, perhaps you've made changes with your own money, maybe it was your marriage. I want you to reflect on those changes you made and try to identify when you were learning a particular concept and when you were actually applying what you were learning and making changes. Can you see that you likely did both in order to improve that area of your life? Where would you be today if you stayed in learning mode and never took action on what you were learning? Can you identify what you learned from actually doing something and taking action? Oftentimes we tend to think that we learn and then we do, but doing is actually a form of learning. And as coaches, we support our clients in taking action on their money and we use them taking action as another step in their growth and another step of their learning. And the whole purpose of that is that what awareness are we gaining so that we can then take even better and more informed steps and actions for ourselves. So I want you to think about that. I want you to tag us with your answer or go ahead and leave us a comment. And let's really try to identify when we're learning something and also when we're taking action on it so we can separate the two. I believe financial coaching is the best and most rewarding way to make a living. I truly love what I do. If you're ready to learn and see how to become a profitable, successful financial coach, check us out at financialcoachacademy.com to learn more about our online courses, our free trainings, and our events. As always, I would love to hear from you too. If you have questions for the FCA podcast, submit them at financialcoachacademy.com forward slash podcast. And if you love this podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review. It would mean the world to me. I'll talk to you next week on episode two, when we're going to talk about, is there a demand for financial coaches? And is this really something people will pay for?